fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, before you go to bed tonight, why not have a treat? A big slice of Betty Crocker white cake and a glass of milk. If your mom has Betty Crocker white cake mix on hand, it couldn't be easier. In fact, you can surprise your folks and bake a delicious white cake yourself. The finest ingredients are right in the mix. So all you have to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs. Isn't that easy? And quick, too. You just pop it into the oven and the result is always perfect. Betty Crocker promises you a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. And you can frost your Betty Crocker white cake with a thick, creamy chocolate frosting. Or enjoy it plain with a dish of ice cream. You know, Betty Crocker white cake has all the special goodness and keeping quality of the best homemade. Ask Mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker cake mix on hand and bake up a perfect cake soon. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! In a wooded grove near the railroad tracks, four men with their faces masked by bandanas waited tensely as they heard the distant whistle of an approaching train. Ken. Ken Slater. Yeah? Come here. What you want, Dutch? You're nervous, hmm? Yeah, a little. That's the way I felt when I first helped rob a train. Just remember to do your part well, Ken. Then you'll be a full-fledged member of the gang. Right. When do I meet the leader of the gang, Dutch? Who is he? After this hold-up, you'll meet him. Don't be impatient. Hey, Dutch, the train will soon be coming around the bend. Yes, have your guns ready. How are we going to stop it? Dave, one of our men is riding the train. He'll pull the stop cord, then we move in fast. Look, here it comes. I hope Dave gets to pull the stop cord. Don't worry, Joe. We can depend on him. See? Stopping now. Come along, men. Can you stick close to me? Yeah. All right, let's go. I'll cover the engineer and fireman. Good. We'll go to the express car. They will get the door open for us. Later at Gary Black's office, the gang waited in the back room while Dutch talked to Gary. Here's the cash, Gary. That was very easily done. Good. I'll keep it in my safe for the time being. What about the new man, Ken Slater? He did his part, but he was squeamish about shooting the clerk. He stopped me and knocked the clerk out. What do you think of him otherwise? Oh, he'll make a good member. Why do you ask? Look at this. A badge? Yeah. A Pinkerton detective badge. I found it under Slater's mattress. Then he's spying on us. Yeah. Does he know I'm leader? Yes, yes, I told him. He knows a lot about all of us now. You covered your trail back here? Of course. Good. The sheriff and his posse left town this morning. They're still hunting us for the last robbery. Now, but Ken Slater, we must get rid of him. How? I'm going to send him out to my ranch on an errand. You and Joe follow him and make sure he doesn't come back. <laughs> we'll make sure, Fat. Hang around, and when you see Slater leave town... Well, the rest is up to you and John. Gary called Ken into his office, congratulated him on his part in the robbery, 
then sent him on an errand to the ranch. Dutch and Joe took a shortcut and waited in a gully for Ken to pass on the trail. He should be along shortly, Joe. Yeah, we won't have long to wait. Imagine that hombre being a detective and joining the gang like he did. I hear hoofbeats. Must be Slater coming now. Let him ride past. Then I'll shoot him. There he goes. Better shoot, Dutch. Yes, this is it. You hit him. He fell from the saddle. We'll go make sure he's dead. Hey, wait, listen. Riders coming from the other direction. Look, coming around the bend, a masked man and Indian. Let's go on him. No, Dutch. There may be others with him. We'd better get away from here quick. We'll mount and ride along the gully. Yeah. On the trail, the Lone Ranger and Toto heard the shot. They stopped and dismounted beside the fallen man. Oh, 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 oh. He's unconscious. There's a bullet crease on his temple. Ah. Someone shoot from ambush. Yes. We'll get him to our camp and take care of him. Then we'll try to pick up the trail of the man who shot him. Later that afternoon, Dutch entered Gary Black's office. Get rid of Ken Slater, Dutch? Yes, I shot him from ambush and we saw him fall from the saddle. But we didn't have a chance to make sure he's dead. Why not? A masked man on a white horse and an Indian on a paint came around the bend. We left in a hurry. A masked man on a white horse and an Indian on a paint? Yes. Holy smoke, Dutch. They must have been the Lone Ranger and his Indian partner. What? Say, I've heard of them. We'll have to do something quick in case Slater is still alive and does a lot of talking. Did you and Joe cover your trail well? Yes, we rode in a stream coming back. Then left it when we saw where a herd of cattle had just been driven across. Nobody could follow us. Don't worry. But I am worried. That masked man is smart. And if Ken Slater isn't dead, he'll talk. Well, then maybe we ought to leave the territory right away. No, 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 no. Well, wait. Hey, I have an idea. What? We'll go to the sheriff. He and the posse are back in town now. I'll tell him you have a line on the men who robbed the train today. Then you tell him about seeing the masked man and Indian with Ken Slater. But if they're caught and Ken Slater is still alive and talks... If he to... tries to blame us, it'll be his word against ours. I'll move the loot from my safe out to the ranch. They won't find any evidence if they come to my office. Good. You take the sheriff and his men to the place where you saw Ken fall from his horse. From there, the posse will trail a masked man and Indian to find if they took Ken away with them. But, Gary, even if they're caught, the sheriff will find out who the masked man is, and then... We it... have to persuade the lawman to shoot the masked man and Indian on sight. And Slater, too, if he isn't already dead. And they'll not have a chance to prove they're on the side of the law. Come on, see the sheriff right now. At the sheriff's office, Gary and Dutch told the lawman about seeing Ken Slater with a masked man and Indian. The sheriff left with Dutch and a posse to trail the Lone Ranger and his friends. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had taken Ken Slater to their camp and bandaged his wounded temple. While Tonto remained with the unconscious man, the Lone Ranger tried to follow the trail of Dutch and Joe, but was unsuccessful, so he soon returned. Oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. Young fella just come to Kimasari. Him not talk yet. We'll go to him now. Look, him trying to get up? Yes, but he's still weak. Take it easy, fella. You're all right. You're, you're masked. You must... Now, we'll talk later. Right now, you need rest. Uh... You have nothing to worry about. Ken Slater stared at the masked man a moment, then lay back and went to sleep. The camp was in a cottonwood grove on a bluff overlooking a valley. Sometime later, Tonto called the Lone Ranger's attention to a cloud of dust he saw in the distance. Look, Timus Abbey, uh, dust cloud mean many riders come. Maybe some ranch hands returning to their ranch from town. Get the field glasses from my saddlebag, Tonto, and keep close watch on those horses. Dutch led the sheriff and the posse along the trail until they reached the place where Ken Slater had fallen from his horse. Oh, oh, oh. This is the place, Sheriff. Right here, I saw them turn from the trail. Here. By golly, I do see the tracks of three horses going toward that bluff yonder. Maybe they have their hideout camp up there, Sheriff. No other reason why they'd ride that way, seems to me. Well, we'll soon find out. Come on, we'll follow those tracks. Then spread out and move up and surprise them if they are there. Now, wait, Sheriff. Don't forget they're killers. We must not take chances. Uh -huh. Have your guns ready, men. Right. If we sight them, gun them down before they have a chance to draw. Right. 
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. The road to success doesn't seem so rocky, does it, knowing that champions are made, not born. Take the life story of Bob Lemon, ace pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Bob played infield at Wilson High. That's where he got his batting eye. He worked instead of merely wishing. To be a champ was Bob's ambition. So he chose Wheaties for top condition. A pitcher now, Bob's made his mark. He still relies on Wheaties' spark. Bob Lemon, a Wheaties regular now for 19 years. A long time to be storing up whole wheat power. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Burn it in, Bob. Keep them swinging. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way. On his way. He's on his way. On his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Now to continue. Tonto, who had been watching through field glasses, saw the group of riders stop at the foot of the slope. He recognized the sheriff and posse and realized they planned to follow the trail he and the Lone Ranger had left when they brought Ken Slater to the camp. He spoke to the masked man. Looked like sheriff, posse... Plan come after us. Yes, we'll have to move quickly. We'll speak to the wounded man. Come on. Uh -huh. A moment later, the two men stood beside Ken, who was sitting up. Riders are heading this way. We'll have to leave at once. Are you able to ride now? Yeah. Why should I leave with you? We're not outlaws, believe me. I promise to answer any questions you want to ask later. Someone shot at you once. If you want to stay and take a chance... Oh, I... no. You and the Indian helped me. I'll ride with you. Good. Let's go to our horses quickly. A short time after the three men left the camp, the sheriff and the posse cautiously moved in through the grove. Dutch, who was riding beside the sheriff, pointed and spoke. No, sheriff. That's where they were camped. Yeah, that's your camp, all right. Who the hell? Oh, oh. Well, it looks like they skipped out on us. Say, men, come over here. Like the crooks got away. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> and from the looks of this campfire, I'd say they haven't been going more than a few minutes or so. Hey, look over here, Sheriff. Hey? I found the tracks of three horses heading away from the bluff. Good. We'll trail them and try to get close enough to gun them down. Steady. All right, let's go. Get it back. Yeah, let's go. The Lone Ranger, with Tonto and Ken Slater, carefully covered their trail after leaving camp. Later, the three men stopped in a remote hollow. Ken Slater, still puzzled by the masked man and Indian, asked... Mister, I don't savvy all this. You said you'd answer my questions. What about that mask? And how did I end up at your camp? Well, as I told you before, we're not outlaws. We heard a shot earlier today and found you unconscious on the trail. That's right. If we planned to harm you, we certainly wouldn't have gone to the trouble of taking care of you. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any idea who shot you? No, but... Well, we're anxious to help you. If you care to tell us something about yourself, perhaps there's well, some... I reckon I ought to trust you since you saved my life, mister. My name is Ken Slater. I came to this territory to get evidence against an outlaw gang operating here. You're a lawman? A Pinkerton detective, to be exact. I've heard of that association. Fairly new, but very effective. Go on, Ken. Well, I managed to join the outlaw gang. I'll tell you what happened since then. Ken gave a brief but clear accounting of his activities with the gang, telling about the recent train robbery and of finally meeting the leader, Gary Black. When he finished, the Lone Ranger said, Did it occur to you Black may have discovered your identity and tried to get rid of you? Yeah, that's possible. Before he can be accused of being the gang leader, we'll have to get definite evidence against him. That should be easy. The money taken from the train is in his safe at his office in town. Good. 
After dark, we'll make camp in the grove at the edge of town. Then we'll plan to move against Black and his gang. Darkness had fallen when the sheriff and posse gave up the search and returned to town. Dutch was in the sheriff's office, trying to get the lawman to continue the hunt for the masked man and Indian. But, Sheriff, Gary Black is anxious for them to be captured. We haven't given up the search, Dutch. The moon is plenty bright tonight, and after supper, we'll go out and scar the hills for those gunslingers. I reckon I'll leave now. Oh, wait, Sheriff. Now, either of you move. Look, the masked man. Well, why, son, do you have your nerve coming here with drawn guns? You were looking for us a while ago, Sheriff. I thought you'd be glad to see me. I reckon you ought to know. My men have orders to shoot you and the Indian on sight. That's interesting. Why did you come searching for us? This man here, Dutch, saw you and your two partners turn off the trail today and head for the bluff. He took us out there because we're convinced you three are the hombres who held up the train. At least you three were along. No telling where the rest of your gang is. Sheriff, the wounded man they have with them is added proof that they were in the gun battle at the train today. Wounded man? How do you know we had a wounded man with us? I, well... Of it... course, if you were there when Ken Slater was shot from ambush, you'd know he was wounded. Ken Slater? Yes, he's a Pinkerton man, Sheriff. That can easily be verified. What is this, anyway? That you told Don't us... Don't listen to him, Sheriff. Hold it! No! no. Reach, mess man! Behind you with a gun. Keep him covered, deputy. Now we... My Indian friend at the window has your deputy covered, Sheriff. But the Indian? Ah, uh, we have guns ready. You'll not get away with a deal like this. You wild hoots will soon find out... We're not outlaws, Sheriff. That Indian's name is Tonto. I'm the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Holy mackerel, Sheriff. I saw him and the Indian close up once before. Over at San Antone six months ago. He is the Lone Ranger. Great day. I've heard a lot about you and your Indian friend, mister. And to think we were out to gun you a while ago. Yes, because this man Dutch and his boss Gary Black persuaded you. That's right, they did. But after all, they thought... They knew my identity, Sheriff. I suggest you put Dutch behind bars and hold him for questioning. All right. Deputy, take Dutch back to one of our cells. All right, Sheriff. Come on, Dutch. No, no, you can't do this. Now, Sheriff, I have something very surprising to tell you. Yeah. Listen to what I've learned from Ken Slater, the Pinkerton man. He managed to join the outlaw. The Lone Ranger told all Ken had found out about the gang. But meanwhile, Gary Black and his men had taken the stolen shipment and the loot from previous robberies from the office safe to Gary's ranch not far from Flint Rock. Later, as the sheriff and his men waited in the shadows, the Lone Ranger entered the window of Gary Black's darkened office. <coughs> Soon, the masked man came out to join them. What about it? Were you able to open the safe? The safe was unlocked and empty. Mm. Without that evidence, we can't move against Gary Black, even on Ken Slater's say so. That's right. Black owns a ranch not far from here. Gee, maybe he went out there with his men and took the stuff from the safe with him. I suggest we go out there right away. That's what we'll do. Get your horses, men. <laughs> Later, in the living room of his ranch house, Gary Black and some of the members of the gang stood around a table, splitting the loot taken in the various robberies. I'm giving each man his share now. And I want all of you to leave the territory tonight and lay low for a while. What about you? If there's a slip-up in regard to the masked man and Indian, they work with the sheriff, they still can't accuse me of anything without evidence. I'll deny everything. Just sit tight. Dutch ought to be back by now. wonder what happened. Maybe the posse gunned the masked man in Indian. Well, I'll set his share aside until he does get here. He'll tell us what happened. And don't forget the two men are on guard outside, Gary. I said I'd watch out for their share. I've counted them in. Don't worry. Well, that's it. Oh, smoke. The guards must have spotted somebody out there. What do we do? We might be trapped. All right, calm down, all of you. The doors and windows are locked and the shades are drawn. Help me hide this loot in the empty stove, quick. If anyone comes here, I have a right to be meeting with my ranch hands. Get busy. Stop it in there. It's me, Dave. Hurry up, let me in. That's Dave. Let him in, Joe, quick. Yeah. Get in there, you. Reach, you're all covered. A trick. Save you, fool. I couldn't help it, Gary. They got Pete. The masked man said he'd plug me if I didn't do as he said. He forced me to do it. You have no right busting in here like this, mister. 
I own this ranch, and I have a You right. didn't finish hiding the loot in the stove, Black. Don't send them, Gary. Pull it. Use your guns, man. Plug it. Hey. All right, don't you turn to them. I've been in there here at the windy. That's the sheriff. And some of his men are busted in the back door. Put a trap, Gary. Don't shoot, Sheriff. There's my gun. The rest of the posse, including Tonto, entered from the kitchen. A moment later, the sheriff came in behind the Lone Ranger. Sheriff, the evidence you want is there in the stove. I saw them putting it there as they came in. Uh, take a look. Sheriff, you have no right busting in like this. Oh? Well, here's all the evidence we need against you, Gary Black. Yep, loot from the train robbery... And other loot besides. That's right, Sheriff. I can identify the stuff taken from the train if necessary. Look, Ken Slater. How can he be here when I saw Dutch? When you saw Dutch shoot him from his horse? That's what you were going to say? Shut up, Joe. Sheriff, it's very evident Gary Black sent men to ambush Ken Slater because he knew too much. Here's Ken's Pinkerton detective badge I found on the table. Uh-huh. So you try to make fools of me and my men, eh, Black? Well, we have a good case against all of you now. We already have Dutch in jail. Oh, I'm sure glad to hear that. Misty, oh. thanks to you, we got this gang without much trouble. Glad Tom and I could help. We came to this territory because of this gang's activities. Ken, we'll see you in town later. You too, Sheriff. Right. Adios, everybody. Adios. Come on, Dotto. Uh-huh. All right, come on. Get him on here. All right, <laughs> Easy, big fella. So long and thanks, Lone Ranger. Adios, Ken. Montilla! Montilla! Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.